I love nails. Uh, there, I've said it. Um, nails to me are much like the hardware that you put on your um, on any of your furniture, like your hinges, your knobs. I mean, you should be picky about the nails that you use. And as a result, these are not the nails that we are going to use. These nails are what we call wire nails, uh, probably invented by the Egyptians, uh, but popularized by the French about 1800. And so they are essentially just a wire. Um, and have a head and a point. You, you know, that's what you think of when you think of a, a nail. But these weren't the nails that were used for making furniture. These nails don't hold very well at all. They can be used in houses and they can be used for some things, but, but they're just not, just not, they just don't have the holding power. Um, what has the holding power is what came really, I guess after the Egyptians invented the wire nail, but it was, uh, we think it was invented by the Romans. And it's called, we call it sometimes a wrought head nail. So let's take a look at these nails. And these are all, the ones here you're seeing, are handmade by a blacksmith. And uh, they're iron. And what's different about them from the wire nails is that they're square instead of round. And they taper on all four sides. So they wedge into the wood, um, leaving a very strong uh, joint behind. So this is uh, what the Romans used. We found thousands of them in, in Roman campsites that have been dumped in wells and stuff. Um, and uh, people still make them today. Blacksmiths still make them today. And when I have a customer that will pay for it, I'm going to use these. But the customer is going to pay for it. These are going to be $1.50, sometimes up to $2 per nail. That's really expensive. So that's a great option if you have a nice historic piece and they hold very well. But the other option, modern option today, is to use what I, I call, these are forged, machine forged nails. And these are made in France. So the, the French are forgiven for inventing wire nails if they uh, invented these. And these are machine forged on a die. And they look very much like the Roman nails. They are square in section and they taper and they ha even have this nice little uh, faceted head. And so they look pretty good. And this is what we're going to use uh, for the bookcase. And these hold really well. Probably not as well as a Roman nail because the, the surface is smooth. And if you saw in the Roman nail, it was really kind of um, nasty and uh, you know, kind of rough. And that was, that's a good thing. Uh, but we're going to use these because these are run about five cents a piece. So big price difference. And you can't really tell the difference uh, unless you look really close or your customer's really savvy. So after uh, Roman nails and uh, these machine forged nails came in, uh, one of the other big innovations uh, in the late 18th century was what we call cut nails. And you're going to see cut nails a lot. So let's look at some cut nails. And cut nails are a machine made nail. They're still made today. Um, and they are different than the Roman nail. And the difference is that they taper in one direction as you can see here, but when I turn it 90 degrees, they don't, they're not tapered. And that's because they are cut from a sheet of steel or iron, and the, the, the shear is at an angle. So they're sheared off at an angle, and that creates this taper, but the thickness of the, uh, the, the plate is consistent. And so this, that's why we call it a cut nail. These hold really well, maybe not as well as, as one of the blacksmith nails, but uh, this is what built you know, America. Uh, in houses and, uh, and furniture all through the 19th century and early 20th century. They're still made today. They're still used in masonry. I still like them uh, quite a lot. And the, they cost, you know, two, three cents a piece. So you're going to be able to save a little bit of money there. So those are the three major, you know, sort of broad categories of nails. But let's talk a little bit more about uh, specifically, you're going to hear a lot of crazy nail names, like what's a brad, what's a clout, what's a rosehead, what's a rot head, what's a clinch nail. And in furniture, we basically have, um, you know, three or four types of nails that we use. There are hundreds of names for nails, but uh, the most uh, important thing is what do they do and how are they used in a project? So if we look here at this little... Uh, little board that's filled with nails, uh, you can see some of the nails and how they look to the user. And uh, the nails that we're going to use have this pronounced head. And so these, this head is used for fastening things on. So we're trying to fasten the side of the case onto the shelves or fasten the back on. And we don't want to be able to pull that off. Uh, 
So we have a head that acts like a washer, if you think about it, as, as sort of a, a, a bolt with a, with a washer. It's the same thing. So you want to use a headed nail. So here we have, this is one of the blacksmith nails. This is one of the wrought machine-made nails. Uh, this is a rosehead cut nail. So they look very similar. You can get the same kind of look. And this is a, a, a cut clinch nail. So any of these headed nails will work just fine. Uh, now, if we look down here on the second row, uh, this square, this is a brad. And this nail doesn't have much of a head at all. So this is what it looks like when it's not in the wood. So as you can see, it doesn't really have a head at all. So it can't do the same sort of fastening. That, uh, that these nails do up here. It's more useful for toe nailing and just holding things on temporarily, you know, it's while the glue dries, um, or for shear, uh, shear forces. But it's, it's, it's really just not as good for fastening. And then the last kind of nail uh, is this little tiny freckle of a nail, and that's a cut headless brad, and I'll show you what those look like. And those are these things that look basically just like wire. Um, that are, and they're tapered a little bit, but these have virtually no holding power in the head whatsoever. So they're useful for, you know, tacking up molding um, on, uh, on casework and holding it down while, while the glue does its job. Uh, these are very expensive, and I'll, truth be told, I use an 18 gauge or 23 gauge pinner instead of these because these can cost about 25 cents each, um, which is really just crazy for holding on molding. Um, and then the last kind of nail we've got here, this is a, a wire sinker, and, and that's with a waffle head, which is just ugly as all heck. So don't use that, all right? Be, be, be conscientious with your furniture. So now that I've hopefully convinced you to try to give nails um, a, a try on your project, what you have to know is that it needs a pilot hole. Unlike wire nail, wire nails don't need pilot holes, cut nails and blacksmith made nails need a pilot hole. So you need to do some experiments first off to uh, you know, determine what pilot uh, size pilot hole you should use to, uh, to get this to go into the wood without it splitting. And uh, so what I normally do is um, I try to find either a tapered bit or a straight bit that is, you know, where, where the tip is about the same size as the tip here. That's a good place to start. And that'll give us some wedging action, you know, because then this is all thicker, so it's gonna wedge against the wood, but hopefully it will allow this center core of the nail to pass without splitting. It all depends on how splitty the wood is and where you are, how close to the end you are, but that's a good place to start. The other important thing, that most people fail to do when they first start off with uh, uh, furniture made nails is they make their pilot too deep. So they make their pilot the same depth as their nail, which is what you do with screws. But you don't do that with nails. You want the pilot hole to be only about two thirds the length of the nail shaft. And that will mean, means the nail has to do some real work and, and really wedges at that tip into the wood and pushes the fibers aside and is what gives the, uh, the head its fastening power.